Hi guys, today I will be reviewing hyped and viral Middle Eastern fragrances. I actually have a total of 11 new Middle Eastern perfumes to review to you guys. However, today I decided just to talk about half of them. So I will talk about like six, it's just that I want to explain these perfumes further rather than compacting 11 fragrances in one video. Um, I just feel like if I divided them into two, then I can give you more concrete descriptions of each. Um, actually, I want to know what you think of it. Do you prefer shorter and precise videos or longer and more in-depth reviews of perfumes? Please let me know in the comments down below. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Joanna and I do reviews and recommendations of affordable and luxury fragrances in my channel. Now, if that sounds appealing to you, then please do keep watching and consider subscribing. These Middle Eastern fragrances that I'm going to talk about today and next week, I had them for, let's say, around three weeks now. And I'm telling you, during the month of August, I was just testing these perfumes. All the perfumes that I'm going to talk about today are available at dubaicollection.eu and in case you decide to purchase any of them i do have a discount code for you guys which is joanna 10 and my discount code is not only applicable in their big bottles but also with their decants now let's get this review started starting off with pear potion by paris corner and guys i know that this is not new this has been in the market for quite some time now and what can I say? This has a candied green apple scent in the beginning. There's a synthetic pear as well as sugary sweetness. It is very, very sweet. However, guys, as it dries down, I am getting creamy coconut milk scent. And I don't know where is that coming from because reading the notes, it doesn't have a coconut milk. The note breakdown says pear, apple, jasmine, caramel, raspberry, and musk. And even though I'm getting all of those notes, especially apple, pear, and musk, um, this has an underlying sweet and creamy coconut milk scent um, as well. And you know me, I love any kind of creamy coconut milk scent. So I really like this one. Um, in the beginning, I thought it was too sugary, sweet, and like fruity. And if you watch my channel, you know that I'm not really a fan of sugary, sweet, candy, fruity kind of scent. However, it's the creaminess and the coconut um, scent in here that makes it a winner for me. As a matter of fact, this is my scent of the day. And it is now 4 p.m. I sprayed this at 9 and I'm telling you guys, this is still going strong on my skin, especially on my clothes. So having said that, this has been on me for around seven hours now and it has a very good longevity. And when it comes to projection, I must say that the first three to four hours is quite very good, meaning above average. And then, you know, now I must say that it is very moderate. However, it is still very good. I really like this fragrance to the point that I feel like it's a love, actually. You know what? It's not just a like. This is a love for me. This is more of a summer scent. It is a little bit juvenile, I must say. However, I am really enjoying it. I love the synthetic pear in it. It's a kind of synthetic note that I like. To be honest, when something is synthetic, it doesn't mean that it's bad anyway. I must say the synthetic pear in here mixed with the green apple, caramel, and that creamy coconut milk works very well in this fragrance. I'm going to describe this as a fun, everyday kind of scent, but more for the spring and summertime. I feel like if you are in your 20s and if you love fruity scents, fruity and creamy kind of scents, you will definitely enjoy this one. And to be honest, I love it that much that I think I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Pear Potion by Paris Corner. Next up is called Mango Punch. Once again, by Paris Corner. 
and basically with the name you already know that it is going to be a mango scent right okay now this fragrance is extremely synthetic okay the mango pineapple blackberries that are in here are very plasticky and synthetic um reminds me so much of Fleur's Mango Mood and I really like this fragrance, okay? They are both inspired by Wilhelm's Perfumery Mango Skin and to be honest, I feel like they are extremely the same that I don't need both. Mm. This opens up very sugared, plasticky, candy sweet fruits, mainly mango and pineapple. And then um, as it dries down, it becomes muskier and muskier. So to me, this is mainly fruits and musk. It is too synthetic for my style. I think um, even though that there are some white flowers listed in here, I am not really getting those. The synthetic fruits are more prominent to me. However, I know that there are people, I think, who will enjoy this fragrance. This is quite juvenile to me. What I notice when a fragrance is mainly fruit, chewy, musky kind of scent, they tend to have this weird dry down. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I think this kind of fragrances mixed with sweat makes you even feel more synthetic. And yeah, I am not really a big fan of this scent. Um, and also since I have um, Mango Mood, um, I prefer this one because I feel like this has an airier and lighter feel to it that is not uh extremely synthetic because this one is synthetic as well however i find mango punch to be more synthetic and more sugary this is a very good dupe of mango skin so if ever you are looking for a dupe of mango skin i highly recommend you mango punch however to me this is just not my vibe and if i have to rate this fragrance it will be seven out of ten um yeah so that is mango punch by paris corner next up is the newest from this collection and this is called juicy melange i wish i pronounced it right um anyway let's talk about the scent if you follow me on instagram i made a pr unboxing of this juicy melange and i was so excited actually because it was my first time to receive a pr box from a Middle Eastern brand and yeah, it was quite cool. I will try to post the video um, on the screen um, because it included a lot of stickers and like curly stuff that I actually gave to my twin girls and they were so happy about it. And also the colors are mainly violet and um, fuchsia pink. They love those colors. So anyway, now let's talk about the scent. I'll be honest with you guys, uh, when this fragrance was released, I was on holiday. So even though I was interested about this fragrance, I didn't really have the time to watch reviews or at least check what I can expect from it. And I was expecting it to be uh, a fruity, berry kind of scent. But to be honest, guys, I was quite surprised because this fragrance over here, has some depth so if the first two fragrances that i mentioned are fun and fruity um juicy melange something that is spicy and dark this fragrance seems like the eldest sister of the other two yes it is still very fruity this fragrance is mainly blackberries and plum it has that unique spiciness coming from the basil which gave this fragrance a bit of an ump it also has a very prominent vegetal iris and an underlying earthy patchouli 
if I have to describe this fragrance, it will be a spicy and dark berries and plum kind of scent with patchouli. So it is still a fruit chewy. However, I don't find this fragrance musky at all. It has more depth instead of musk. This has more of a patchouli base. Having said that, it has a bit of maturity in it. And when I say maturity, it doesn't mean that it smells old, okay? Juicy Melange has a touch of elegance in it. The vibe of the bottle is not the vibe of the scent. Just the scent to me is really giving dark and gothic vibe. However, still fruity. I appreciate how they did this fragrance because it has a very good performance. This lasted on me around four to maximum seven hours with a moderate projection. I feel like someone who is in her 30s will enjoy this fragrance more. You know, that's what I mean by mature. Um, amongst the, this three collection, I will say that Juicy Melange has the complexity, the depth, more maturity, I must say. I will say when it comes to scent profile and the quality of the fragrance, this is the best amongst the three. Personally, this is not something that I would love to smell like. However, if you are the type who likes um, dark, gothic, spicy kind of scents, you will enjoy Juicy Melange. It is a nice scent, however, not my style. Um, but anyway, having said that, I'm gonna rate Juicy Melange an 8 out of 10. All right, now we're gonna proceed to the Ophidian collection of Paris Corner. And the first one that I'm gonna talk about is Cold Sweet Surrender. And guys, you know, when I received this scents from Dubai collection three weeks ago, I was so excited. This collection was the one that I tried first. Mm. Sweet Surrender to me is very, very similar to Latafa's Nebras, okay? Let's talk about the scent of Sweet Surrender first. Mm, this opens up very sugary and fruity. Mm. As it dries down, the vanilla, tonka, amber, and cocoa starts to peek through, giving this fragrance complexity. Mm. It is not very musky, which I like, because I find a lot of Middle Eastern perfumes very musky. I feel like most of them are 50 or 40% musk. However, not the case with Sweet Surrender and basically this collection. Mm. To me, this smells like red berries and hot cocoa powder with a touch of mandarin. I find it more fruity than more chocolatey, if you know what I mean. And that is the difference between the two. And by the way, I feel like if you have Nebras, you don't need Sweet Surrender, okay? Because they are extremely similar. Um, if I have to pick the difference, I will say that Nebras has an oily dry down to it. I don't know. I feel like it has a more concentrated oil and also Nebras has more of that cacao. With Sweet Surrender, I find the orange more prominent along with the berries in it whereas nebras has more powdery cocoa and like oily feel to it i just feel like nebras is more concentrated um so if you don't like the dusty cocoa powder from nebras and you want it more fruity i feel like you will enjoy more sweet surrender however to me Personally, I prefer Nebras. It doesn't mean that Sweet Surrender is not a good scent, okay? It's redundant to own both, but scent-wise, Sweet Surrender is a cozy tonka, red berries, cocoa powder, and amber kind of scent that is perfect to use this fall and winter time. Oh, and when it comes to longevity and projection, 
this actually lasts quite good and i'm gonna rate this one an eight out of ten next up is called mango bliss and this fragrance is another mango centric scent that is quite nice however let me tell you though my experience i feel like it smells differently on paper and on skin on paper oh my god this smells like a bug repellent however on skin it is better it doesn't give that much of a bug repellent um, compared to when sprayed on paper this has a very prominent mango lemon and ginger especially in the beginning however as it dries down the woody notes musk and amber um actually picks through along with the mango lemon and ginger so it is not linear and the oud that is in here is very very gentle to the point that it's almost indistinguishable and i know that this is inspired by stefan humbert lucas god of fire um, i didn't have the chance to compare them side by side because i finished my decant of god of fire but let me tell you when i sprayed this fragrance i didn't know yet that it was inspired by god of fire but it really reminded me of god of fire especially the final dry down i've used this several times actually during the hot and humid days in august and oh boy this performs really really well it stayed put during those hot summer days. So having said that, the performance of this fragrance is very good and above average. Now, when it comes to the scent, personally, I am not a fan of God of Fire. However, the people around me likes it. So yeah, I guess I should give this fragrance a good rating, right? Um, yeah. It is complex, good quality, um, mango, woody scent that lasts the entire day. Actually, this fragrance makes me appreciate God of Fire more because I remember I didn't really like God of Fire. God of Fire to me was such a meh and, you know, it was so expensive. So with Mango Bliss, even though the scent is just an okay to me, um, with the price, I'm not complaining. So having said that, I will say that this is a great buy and an amazing alternative of God of Fire. Um, and I'm going to rate this fragrance a 9 out of 10. And last but not the least is called Black Cherry. And guys, this fragrance over here is amazing. I love this fragrance from first sniff i must say amongst all the full bottles that i received in pr this is the one that i love the most um this is apparently inspired by kayali's love fest burning cherry which i have and i have compared these two side by side okay um black cherry is only similar to love fest in the opening they go separate ways in the dry down because love fest is very linear what you get in the beginning basically is the scent of the fragrance the entire wear however with black cherry this fragrance evolves this starts off with that syrupy cherry that is almost the same as tom ford's love cherry aka um kayali's love fest however as it dries down Mm, this becomes powdery. It has that prominent heliotrope, rose, and oud that is just extremely well blended. The way the rose, oud, and heliotrope are blended in this fragrance is very addictive to me. And as it dries down, it even becomes like more powdery along with sweetness, coming from the praline that is almost like chocolate actually you know the first time i tried it i somehow thought of venom of love you know because it is cherry and dark chocolate however they're not the same at all okay but 
they are giving off the same vibe, okay? Sexy and alluring cherry. I love cherry notes in fragrances. And as a matter of fact, I have a lot. However, I don't have anything like black cherry. I think the difference of this is that powdery rose wood um, heliotrope combo sweetened with praline without losing that syrupy cherry nuance in the background. It is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, guys. I don't think that this is actually duping this because this is way better than Kayali's Love Fest. This has patchouli, vetiver, and incense as well. But guys, I'm not really getting any patchouli here. This is just mainly cherry, praline, heliotrope, rose, and oud to me. I'm very impressed with this one. And longevity and projection is 10 out of 10 as well. Last more than 8 hours and stays forever in clothes. All these three last more than 8 hours, guys. So having said that, they all have very good performance. Um, however, personally, Black Cherry is my favorite out of the three collection and I'm gonna rate this one a 10 out of 10. So yeah, having said that, we have two big winners in this video and actually I will add this as well as a big winner for me. So that is the video for today, guys. Please let me know what you think of it. Did you enjoy this more elaborate kind of review rather than me talking about a lot of fragrances but giving like more of a quick review um i would like to know so let me know what you think in the comments down below part two of this review will be coming next week let's say wednesday and i'm telling you i have an amazing list as well as i will be reviewing atina liquid brown and so much more thank you all so much for watching and i hope you're all having an amazing day and see you on my next one bye guys